Okay, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is May 15th of 2019. This is going to be a political video, so many of you will not want to uh, pay any attention to this or watch it or whatever, so <clears throat> feel free to bail out. It looks to me like we're rapidly heading into a very unstable situation here. Uh, we have a president that we cannot believe one word that he says. He has surrounded himself with the most incompetent people. Uh, our current president is unbelievably stupid totally untrustworthy, uh, I think suffers from some type of mental disability. <clears throat> You'd hope that the cabinet would uh, take the necessary actions to remove him because of him being incompetent, but that's not going to happen. He appointed to his cabinet, uh, people who are not going to do that. They don't have the courage to do that. They're not a competent group. Uh, impeachment doesn't look like it can take place because <clears throat> the Republicans in the Senate are not going to remove him. They are the senators uh, supporting him 100%, so he can be impeached. The House uh, could impeach him. That just means to charge him and bring him to trial. He would be the third president of the United States to be impeached. We've never had a president removed through the impeachment process. So that would not help us. Uh, but we have an unstable incompetent man who is president of the United States and he is I don't know whether he watches Fox News and then decides you know what uh, action he is going to to take or if he just if he just pops into his uh, into his mind that he is going to, uh, you know, do something without any, uh, you know, now he's sending U.S. Marshals to the border of the United States. He's sending them to keep immigrants out of the United States. He's sending TSA employees, those are airport screeners and security at the airport. He's sending those to the border. Uh, he says that, or apparently, uh, I think they may, maybe they're denying it, that, but uh, he's looking into sending uh, 120,000 of the military uh, because of Iran uh, to use uh, let's go back a little bit. I've been blogging forever. Uh, back before the Gulf War, when there was uh, talk of the Gulf War, I blogged repeatedly. Not that it mattered because, you know, the maximum back then, a thousand people a day, might, and they weren't coming looking for political commentary. At the most, I had a thousand people. 300 a day usually. It varied depending on what people searched for. But back before the I, Iraq war, when we were getting ready to, when uh, the president was, you know, calling for it, I said uh, that we should, one, not do it. I said, let the people of Iraq take care of their own mess, their own government. And I said, if you're not going to do that, 
let the nations in the uh, area let them take care of it. We shouldn't get shouldn't get involved. Nobody should get involved. Let uh, let Turkey, if Turkey agrees, uh, let them just move in and take part of uh, Iraq uh, as long as they agree that the Kurds will be allowed an area. And I understand the the thing that Turkey and others and the you know in the area. Uh, including Russia and everybody else, don't want the Kurds to have their own homeland because then there's Kurds and these other nations who will want to, you know, I understand all that, but still, let the Kurds have their area, make sure that Turkey goes in and gets the area that they want. And I said, uh, you know, if the uh, the government in Iraq can't, Settle it, and if the nations the, around them, you know, let them just let just just break Iraq up into three separate areas. There would be no more, you know, no more Iraq. And then I said, I blogged, you know, if we're going to go in there, we need uh, four hundred and fifty thousand troops. And of course, you know, we really did not have four hundred and fifty, and I knew that. We didn't have 450,000 troops to go in there. And uh, I also said, you know, uh, before we go in there, if we're going to go in there, uh, we should uh, institute the draft, put the draft back into Of course, I said that because I knew the American people are not, you know, American people are willing to sit there and let somebody else that uh, somebody else's son or daughter go, but if it comes to a draft and their son or son or daughter may be going, they're not. And a Congress is not going to. I said the draft would have to be institute the draft, put it into effect. And then, of course, you know they were saying uh, Republicans were saying that. Uh, well, it's not going to cost us anything financially. Of course, it's going to cost us blood, but not going to cost us anything financially because we will, and I said that's, you know, I'm going to use the oil money. That's baloney. It's going to cost us, you know, t tons and tons of money. And what we need to do before we go in is pass a war tax, the Iraq war tax. Everybody would have to pay tax. I knew. The Congress is not going to pass, you know. So anyway, I'm saying no. So, of course, then we went into Iraq. And as the news was coming out, you know, that I can remember when the news came out that we were just rushing right in there, heading right for Baghdad, and that uh, we passed, we were leaving pockets of, Iraqi, you know, military forces behind us, beside us, we were just going on in. And I said, no. I said, I understand during World War II in the Pacific that, you know, we bypassed islands where there were Japanese troops and, you know, went on for the uh, other, tar I said, but no, not in, I said, don't have any troops. You don't can't leave any of the, you know, and then uh, it was just, you know, so then we ended up with what we have now uh, in Iraq, which in a weakened Iraq, you know, strengthens I Iran. Um, then for a while we were worried about the Iraqi government kind of making a deal with uh, Iran. You know, here we go in and mess up Iraq. And uh, so let's move a little bit ahead. Um, I forget the, forget the date or I forget the name of the movie, but anyway, there was a, well, let's go back. So then uh, we have President Clinton and the Republicans hate President Clinton and his wife and I guess everybody from Arkansas 
and the entire time that the Clintons were in office, the Republicans just couldn't stand it and did everything they did. And there was nonstop investigations, which continued after the Clintons, you know, left office. And uh, Trump would still like to continue investigations of the Clintons. So anyway, uh, the Republicans, a little clique got together and decided, you know, let's Let's get Clinton out of office. Uh, the American people voted for Clinton, you know, for two terms, but the Republicans decided we got to get him out. So how do we get him out? Well, all we need is one time of him lying under oath. And that's perjury. And that's a felony. And we can remove him from office. So they come up with the Monica Lewinsky thing. And of course, the president lies under oath. That's a felony. And they impeach Bill Clinton. But they couldn't, when it went to the Senate, they did not have enough to remove him from office. But during the impeachment thing that's going on, uh, we really didn't know about Osama bin Laden. I mean, we did, we knew, but nobody, that was, that was not a name that was, you know, he was just some terrorist out there someplace. Uh, Bill Clinton authorized a strike, military, an airstrike on a terrorist camp and during the time that this impeachment thing was going on. And the Republicans went fucking crazy. They, and also there was a movie out that just happened to come out that uh, I think it was sort of a comedy where the president of the United States fakes a crisis situation so that uh, his approval ratings will improve. Maybe because, you know, so uh, President Clinton um, authorized this airstrike. The Republicans go crazy. He did that just, it was not necessary to attack, you know, there. He did that just to uh, improve his credibility and make it, he's a president and we're under attack and, uh, you know, whatever. So it was just a, just a, a fake thing. And so uh, President Clinton, he didn't, he didn't make any more strikes. You know, he didn't get, I don't know how, I don't know if we knew at that point that he, that that strike didn't get Osama bin Laden. But uh, remember, this is before 9-11. Uh, so Bill Clinton didn't make any more military moves like that. Now, we have President Trump lying. The State it. Department ordering all non-emergency U.S. government employees to leave. We have President Trump thinking only about his re-election. And also, I think most everybody agrees, uh, wanting to make sure that he doesn't leave office, you know, that he is reelected, because if he leaves office, I'm guessing there's, at, right at this point, there'll be more. Right now, there's probably 14 felony convictions, or 14 felony charges, at least, uh, <laughs> that are that he's going to be hit with. And when he leaves the office, if he leaves, if he's not reelected, if he's uh, not reelected when he right at this point, and then there are going to be felony state charges that will be, and so all he's thinking about is he wants to be reelected, so he does not want to, you know, 
be out of office. He wants four more years, and that gives him four more years to do everything he can. I'm not sure the United States will survive four more years of a president who is so stupid and has so many mental problems and has absolutely no care about the Constitution of the United States. He doesn't care about anybody other than himself, and people say himself and his family. I'm not sure he cares about his family. I think all he cares about is his himself. And now, it looks like we're at the point of, uh, you know, he's doing things with tariffs. He doesn't know anything about tariffs. <laughs> he's in danger of really, you know, the farmers for one are suffering big time, but everybody is going to suffer from these because he it, he makes decisions just late at night and he's, I don't know whether he's walk, watching Fox News or, but he's, you know, sending tweets out People have to watch the, his Twitter feed to, to, to know what the policies are of the United States of America. He doesn't have competent people around him. He doesn't consult. He doesn't look into, you know, matters. If he had competent people around him and if he was listening to them, uh, that might be another thing. Still dangerous to have somebody who is that stupid and who is mentally ill. And I'm not sure exactly what his mental illness is, but so right now things are not, not looking good. Um, what we need to do at this point what we need is for the court system to function properly, not on not along political lines, but do what is the correct thing. What we need too is Republican senators. They could have a tremendous impact if they would man up, if they would uh fall in the category of profiles and courage. You know, if Republican senators, it only take three, maybe less, say three or four Republican senators go and tell the president, look, you need to watch the entire series of West Wing. You need to get psychiatric help. You need to stop using Twitter you need to stop turning, having Fox News broadcast on all the, you know, if, if you don't want to watch CNN, then just don't have any television, you know, don't watch the news. Anyway, they need to go to him and say, this is the way it is, Mr. President. This, you, you know, you're the head of the executive branch. This is the legislative branch talking to you right now. And uh, we're going to... Uh, we're moving over to the Democratic side. So you no longer control the House. You no longer control the Senate. And uh, you're, you're going to get an education. And we're going to give it to you. And we're going to paddle your bottom. Of course, Trump might like that. I don't know. But uh, I mean, there are, there are people and there's times for, it's time for people to step up and, you know, this all has to be done through our system. And, of course, Donald Trump doesn't understand that there are three branches of government. <laughs> Donald Trump doesn't understand that our founding fathers intended for the legislative branch to be, you know, uh, the primary branch. And, of course, over the over the, that's not Trump's fault that things have, you know, evolved in that direction. It's just with, you know, history and the way things have gone that the executive branch and the president has 
become more important. Uh, but this is a time for Republican senators to, and for the judicial system, you know, Trump is uh, saying he's not going to do this, not going to do that, he's not going to uh, whatever, and, and to hell with the legislative branch or whatever. When these cases go to the court, when it goes to the Supreme Court, what we need is for the Supreme Court to come back with, which won't happen, we need for them to come back with a, you know, unanimous that the president cannot usurp the uh, legislators' uh, area of ex of finance and money and con that type of all these things. They should come back and pound the president, and then he would be like, "Oh God!" And then if the Senate and especially in the Congress, but if the Senate went to him, he would be, you know, he would be like, he might decide to resign, although I don't think he's going to resign. I thought he would, but he's not going to resign now because he knows when he resigns, there are felonies, he's committed felonies, not one, many, and there are more that we don't know about, and uh, the same, I mean, there again with the court, that's a court situation with his tax returns. They should come back and it should be, you know, unanimous. The Supreme Court, I don't think it will be. I think they may come back and say, I think they will come back and it will be, the majority is going to say that his tax returns have to go to Congress and that he doesn't have the authority to prevent, you know, and do this and do that. I think that is going to be the majority. But what we need is if it were unanimous or well, there's always going to be one, you know, Justice Thomas or somebody, you know, but it should be just absolutely, it should be like the news media should be going, uh, you know. And then on sort of the same subject, Trump just does not understand. You know, he's sending, he shouldn't be sending, you know, if, if you can afford to send air marshals down to the border to keep women and children fleeing rape and and uh, persecution and everything else. If you can send them down to keep them from crossing the border, if you can send the air marshals down there, then we don't need the air marshals. You want to save some money? Do away with the air marshal. You'd want to keep a few number for the flights that are you know, that you are concerned about. Any flights, you know, uh, coming out of Iran or Iraq or, you know, that you'd want to keep a few air marshals. And if if you have enough TSA agents, of course, you know, sending these, T, you know, these agents, you know, airport security or screeners, uh, I don't know. If you, if you have enough that you can send down there, and maybe you could, of course, what's going to happen probably is you're going to send these TSA people down there who really aren't going to accomplish, you know, much. But you're going to send them down there. It may not have any impact. What, what if it starts having an impact on, you know, you know, what if you, instead of having to get it, go to the airport, get there an hour early, what if uh, you have to go to the airports and get there two hours early or something? What is it, you know? And two, what Trump does not understand is United States law. You, he doesn't pay any attention, you know, he doesn't, he thinks, whatever he thinks. United States law is written and the law of the land that these people who are coming and trying to get into the United States, refugees, we are supposed to allow them. We're not supposed to stop them at the border and say, stay there, do not come in. We are supposed to allow them to come in. Now, we don't have to put them on a bus and send them to Chicago or, well, like Trump wants to do, put them on buses and send them to 
any city that uh, uh, is a sanctuary city, that type. I mean, that's crazy talk on his part and ideas on his part. But international law, and then of course I know Republicans freak out. United Nations, blue helmeted people, they're going to come in. They've got helicopters, blue helicopters or black helicopters, and oh, the they're build, building uh, WalMarts in uh, turning them, going to turn them into the camps for you know for gun people who love guns. I mean, this crazy insanity, and Trump is part of that, and he feeds into that and those are his supporters or whatever, those immigrants who are coming, international law and United States law requires that they be allowed to come in. Now, you don't have to send them up to Kansas City, Missouri to uh, go to Worlds of Fun and to eat at McDonald's. They're allowed to come in, and then you screen them and you see, why are you coming here? Well, I'm coming here to, uh, I want to go see the Grand Canyon. And uh, you know, are you coming in because of religious persecution? Are you coming in because uh, you're being, you know, you're being raped or whatever from the, your country is, you know, are you? And if you have cause, then we allow you. The, the problem is, I think I forget the number. These cases, that when these people come across under Clinton and others, uh, people would come across, you'd find out their identification or whatever, you know, if they're, you know, felons or whatever, that's different, you know. But if they come across, they're refugees, they're, you know, you get the information from them, you know, you get their fingerprints and you're, you know, all the bio, you know, stuff. And then you find out, okay, you have relatives. Okay, here is when you should be appearing in court. You go, you can go stay with your relatives. So you don't have to have these people sleeping outdoors. You don't have to take the kids, you know, away from their parents. So what you, you know, what you have now is these people come across. And, okay, uh, let's see. Okay, you're coming across today. Well, let's see. Uh, in a year or two, you'll be able to go before a judge. Because I think the number is there are a hundred. We have a special judiciary branch of judges, like we have uh, juvenile judges. We have immigration judges and all they deal with is immigration and I think there's about a hundred of them uh, we probably need 500 or 600 well we whatever the number is we need okay these people are coming across right now how long before a judge and, and before they can have you know a decision made a year or longer too long if we add uh, we have a hundred judges. What if we have another hundred judges? How long would it take? Uh, Eleven months. How many judges? Uh, six hundred. If we have six hundred judges, how long before these all these people coming across would be able to go through the system the way it's supposed to work? Uh, if we had six hundred judges, uh, two months. Fine. Get seven hundred judges. Add an extra. You know. So, anyway, this does not look good, this entire Iran, you know. Uh, Iran is not Iraq. Now, they don't even speak the same language, by the way. And I forget which is Sunni and which is Shiite. I can't remember. <laughs> They're different. Same religion, different, you know, different branches or whatever. Of course, they, you know, it's like Catholics, 
Baptist, Christians, uh, you know, there's differences. And the differences there is they fucking will kill each other and blow each other up and uh, do everything because of it. And so, and Trump, you know, Trump doesn't know the difference between, you know, he doesn't know anything. And this is, this is an explosive uh, situation. We need a competent, you know, president. I'm no fan of <laughs> Mike Pence. And if Trump resigns or is impeached, which it doesn't look like it's going to happen, unless something happens in the Senate and Republican senators decide, oh my God, you know. Uh, at least Mike Pence, there again, I'm no fan of his, and he would be one of the worst presidents. But the guy is, he's not, he's not a Trump. I mean, and hopefully, of course, he's going to pick Republicans. Oh, you know, he would, hopefully he would come in and immediately get rid of all of the cabinet members, get rid of all the people that Trump brought in and actually get some good people. I'm sure he would have, which is against, which is unconstitutional. I'm sure he would have the thing that you have to be a Christian. Maybe not, you couldn't be a Catholic maybe, but you'd have to be. I think probably his thing, which is, it says in the Constitution, you cannot have a uh, religious test for anything. You know, you can't say that, well, uh, for, you know, member of Congress, you have to, you know, or for the cabinet or whatever that you have to, it's, it's in the Constitution. There's very little in the Constitution. Our founding fathers wrote a ter terrific document I think a few years ago, I would have said, leave it alone. Now I think we've seen problems with it. And with the computer revolution and everything, I think we do need, you know, to make some changes to the Constitution. Although that has to be done very carefully. You know, you can, uh, I don't know if you can have, I think you could have a constitutional, in order to change the Constitution, it's really difficult. You know, both houses of the Senate by, both houses of Congress by, a, you know, a high number, two-thirds or three-fourths have to approve it. It has to go to three-fourths of the United States uh, states have to approve it in their legislature by a high number. Or I mean, it's really, really difficult. Uh, we could hold a constitutional convention, and the only way I'd want to be doing that would be if somehow there would be something that you could, I think once in the constitutional convention thing, that you could say, well, okay, we want prayer in school. Uh, we want abortion to be illegal. We want uh, total uh, all gun control things done away with uh, and a person can own nuclear weapons, tanks, you know, you know, <laughs> you'd have to have some things. Okay, we're not doing away with the Second Amendment. Uh, we're not doing away with the First Amendment. You know, we're not doing away with the Fourth Amendment. Uh, we're going to make change. You'd have to have some guidelines that otherwise this how would this nation, you know, what would it be if, when you had the new constitution? But we probably need a constitutional convention, positively do away with gerrymandering. You know, the states dividing up the districts. Okay, make that, okay, we'll get this way. We get our, you know, Republican representative here, but we got to cut these people out over here. Okay, make their little district, you know, whatever, and do this. It should be. We have computers now. 
you know, <laughs> they have a lot of power. We should fix the gerrymandering thing. And in that, uh, Democrats and Republicans in the past both abused the thing, except Republicans always go further. They go on to, you know, the Democrats would make some changes, but not like the Republicans. The Republicans will do, you know. So it should be, you know, gerrymandering. Uh, do away with, you know, corporations are not people. Uh, you know, do away with that idea. Um, what I'd like to see, too, is the presidential term be a six-year term, and you can't give one term six years, not four years, and then have it, you know, can do four more years if you're elected. One six-year term, I think I've mentioned this before, and the reason for that is, you know, the president gets elected, and we maybe we voted for him because he had some great ideas, things we think, great, but the president doesn't work on those because, well, if I do that, some of the voters won't like me, and then I can't get reelected, and they're, then they're always thinking about, well, I want to get reelected. If you have a six-year term, that's it. But all that would have to be studied because, you know, you're going to have a vice president who's also going to be elected for a six-year term. So what would, would all of a sudden, it would, would it be, the vice president would be more, powerful because people be saying, okay, this is going to be the next one. So let's not do this to hurt the chances, you know, so you'd have to do some work in that area. Uh, and two, what I'd like to see for the Constitution and for the country would be uh, the government financing the elections. No longer would a member of the Senate or a member of the House be able to take any money from anybody. You know, now they, money, 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 I have to get, you know, I need money for re-election. I got to be re-elected in order to, you know, whatever it would be. If you take, if you take a dollar from somebody, you know, you're going to, you're going out of Congress and you're going into prison or whatever. So we should take money out. And that would also, saw, and two, the thing of, uh, corporations being people that also if doing away with that that's how we got Trump by the way in a way Republicans love that but that actually hurt the Republican Party because if you remember we had all these candidates running for you know uh, for president you know 10 15 of them up there and half of them or whatever were at least, you know, privately one person, one millionaire or billionaire says, uh, I'd like uh, this person here because I've got influence with them and I sure have influence since I'm doing, give them all the money. And so they end up on the stage, you know, and have no, I, you know, nobody wants them really. But when you're having the debates or whatever, they're all up there, so each one talks for, you know, and that hurt the Republican Party because then you have, you had Trump who said crazy shit and the news media, of course, wow, you know, all these clowns up here, they're all clowns. Well, maybe there was two or three that were presidential, but, Oh, man, Trump, you know, he said such and that's, you know, he was getting all the attention. And so anyway, the thing would be, you know, public financing of, you know, the elections, get the money out of the out of it. Then, of course, now this. Uh, Well, the rest are our thing. Fix some, you know, fix those things. And that would be a major step towards. I don't know what we're going to do, though, about the current situation. Because every day now, when you look at the news, you do not know what, you know, 
what? We have a situation here. Go to DEFCON STUPID. Man, look at the news. TSA to deploy hundreds, including air marshals, to the border. Why residents are leaving the Trump Tower. I think one of the reasons is, <laughs> you know, people who probably spend that kind of money for... Uh, what do you call it? Not apartments, condos or whatever. They're having to deal with security. And that's probably not what you, if you have that kind of money, you don't want to have to uh, deal with, you know, presidential security or whatever. But I'm sure there's a bunch of people who don't want to tell people that they live in the Trump Tower. I mean, that the Trump name, so far as uh, we know now, I mean, he lost, what, a billion dollars or whatever. Everything he has been involved, even casinos. How could you lose money? And I've, I've given casinos some of my money. You know, they always win. Uh, how can you lose money with a casino? I think a casino is like, like you have your own personal mint, you know, like you can just print your money. So, uh, but I, I don't think the brand name now I don't think you want to say if you're a business, you don't want to be the Trump, you know, Trump shopping center or Trump hotel or Trump whatever, you know. So I think that's probably it too. But probably a lot of it is uh, you know, two or three states have passed uh anti-abortion things and I think Alabama I think it is. Yeah, uh, Alabama has passed a total, just about a total ban on, and that's not legal, but what they're doing, and which is okay, I mean, well, it's not okay to be stupid, but what they're doing is making a case that is going to go to the United States Supreme Court for sure. I think the United States Supreme Court justices are up there, you know, up there, uh, we don't want to, you know, we've already ruled, you know, that abortion is legal. Uh, there are certain, you know, certain limits, you know, as to uh, when you can do it. But there are certain, but it's it's legal. We've It's already been ruled a long time ago, and we don't want to mess with it. But now Alabama is pushing a you know, finger in their eye. Okay, now, you know, because this... It's going to have to go to the United States Supreme Court. I can't see this. You know, Supreme Court can say, we're not going to hear the case. But if it did that, then that law would remain in effect. So the Supreme Court is not going to have any choice but to hear the case. And there again, the situation is, I would just hope the Supreme Court would even rule, you know, like unanimous. It wouldn't be unanimous, of course, because you have... Justice Thomas and somebody else, you know. Uh, but that way it would be like, bang, okay. Uh, that battle, you know, we lost it in the past. We lost it again by a bigger margin. So now what can we do? Now what you would hope they would have done in the past, you'd hope what they would do now, which they won't. They just can't bring themselves to do it. You know, what they need to do is, you know, sex education, you know, use of contraceptives and all of this, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Now the Republicans will go fucking crazy. Oh, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, teaching uh, boys in uh, kindergarten how to use condoms. I mean, you know, it's, they're, you know, they're crazy. But what they need to do is, you know, sex education and all of this type of stuff, and that will reduce, you know, the number of 
abortions, but it won't do away with, you know, won't do away with it. But U.S. has the lowest number of births in 32 years. I'm not sure. I think we need. <laughs> I think we need immigrants coming in because I think we're going to need people, you know, especially if we're going to be uh, starting a war with. Iran and other places, we need those to come across uh, young men from Costa Rica and Mexico and, did I say Costa Rica? Oh yeah, Costa Rica, not Puerto Rico, okay. We need those young guys coming across and, oh, okay, you want to be a U.S. citizen, okay, you go this way and it's going to take five or ten years before you're approved. Go in the military and serve whatever it is. With the French Foreign Legion, when you, I, I forget what it is, 20 years or whatever the number of years, if you go in, if you're not a French citizen and you go into the French Foreign Legion, uh, when you finish your 10 years or 20 years or whatever it is, you become a full French citizen. If you go in the French Foreign Legion and you are wounded uh, during your course, you know, say you're in there a year and you, you know, you are wounded. I forget what the word, it's in French, of course, but it means like French by blood or something. You automatically become a French. Let's do that here. You know, go in the middle, you know, take qualified people, you know come across the border, you want to be a U.S. citizen, if you go in, you know. Of course, I'm not in favor of war. I think we should do everything we can to try to avoid war, but let's, our birth rates are down. I think we may need some, these little little boys or and girls, I guess, that are coming across. Uh, don't leave them sleeping outside. Uh, don't separate them from their mommy. Uh, that when they get to uh, up there, if, you know, I'm not talking about using, you know, mercenaries or whatever, but Uber and Lyft approved alleged war criminal to drive. Well, I, I'm guessing that this is not a uh, Nazi war criminal because he'd probably be older than I am. He'd be, you know, 97 or something, right? Three found dead with crossbow wounds. What's going on? <laughs> am, I, am I dreaming? Man killed three women tied to a carnival. I didn't know we had any carnivals left. When I, I'm, I am 78. When I was a kid, circuses and carnivals came to town. Not just one, you know, not just a major one, you know, that went to the municipal auditorium or whatever, but small ones, family runs, you know. They were coming through all the time in, uh, you know, the good weather, and they would set up in a park or whatever, right, right you know, in your neighborhood and they'd be there for two or three days and then they would move a few miles over to a park or some area that was open to them where they could set their tents up and then they would be there so close that you know we could ride you know we had the local one there hey down the street and we could ride over to the you know they hadn't left town yet but anyway i told you this was going to be political couldn't be much more political than this uh, I guess leave your comments below, right? Thank you very much for watching.